what do these two airplanes, these three airplanes, and these four airplanes all have in common? Let's find out on Celebrating Aviation with Mike Machat. What all these aircraft have in common, and even these two, is that they're flying in formation. We're going to talk about formations. Uh, I'd like to present a, a kind of a photo essay, an overview of some of the flights I've had, and show you different formations and some unusual aircraft as well. Now, this is a painting I did of two F-105Ds in formation on an early morning launch. Let's look at another artist's version. This is uh, two F-105s dropping single bombs from 40,000 feet next to a thunderstorm. There's only one artist that could get away with this, and that's the great Jack Lenwood. This is a Ravel cover. I thought I'd slip the model cover in in the beginning of this presentation uh, just for a change. When you think of formations, you think of the Air Force Thunderbirds in a diamond, or the Navy Blue Angels in a delta, or perhaps the Canadian Snowbirds in this beautiful line of breast, the uh, Patrol de France, uh, one airplane in knife edge at the upper left and uh, lower right. You've got the uh, uh, red arrows from the United Kingdom in what they call the big nine or an arrowhead. But here we have the Douglas World Cruisers in a route formation. This is an open formation where the airplanes are uh, literally flying from point A to point B together and they want to keep inside of one another. This was done during the uh, world's first uh, circumnavigation of the earth in 1924 uh, the Douglas World Cruisers, five started out, three completed the journeys, took six months, 62 stops, and an amazing feat in aviation. But the airplanes were flown in a formation like you see here. Sometimes formations are for demonstrations, like these three B-36s flying over our nation's capital. Sometimes for promotion, uh, shots like this are taken to show uh, two different versions of the same airplane, in this case, the Douglas Sky Raider. Or here we have a family portrait of all the Cessna airplanes for 1956. Love this photo. Uh, in many cases, there's a formation of a photo aircraft with a photographer, as we see here, taking a picture of a Blackburn Buccaneer, showing the beautiful shape of the airplane. In many cases, the photo formation does not show the wingtip of the airplane uh, because they want to highlight the beautiful lines, in this case, a Hawker Hunter. Now, here's a formation you wouldn't expect to see, a Blahnik L-13 sailplane with a North American AT-6 trainer. But this is my glider. Uh, I'm flying over San Ynez, California, north of Santa Barbara. And the T-6 is being flown by uh, Rick Drury, who uh, was a member of the Condor Squadron based in Van Nuys, California. And they have a fleet of T-6s in various markings. And uh, we thought this would be an unusual combination of aircraft. This is an original World War II color photo of the Curtis P-40 taken from another airplane. You can see the wingtip at the bottom. Uh, personally, I, I enjoy seeing the other airplane in the photo. It really gives you a sense of the connection between the two uh, aircraft. Here we have uh, P-51B, beautiful aerial. And again, these are original Kodachromes from World War II. Now, this is not. This is uh, a shot of modern warbirds. Uh, based in Chino, California. They we're taking uh, a flight down the ridge toward Lake Elsinore. And uh, this is a photo that I took from the uh, photo uh, Beechcraft Baron uh, used by Air Classics. They were setting up for a magazine uh, feature, but uh, an interesting formation as well. Formation flying is taught in the military, uh, beginning with basic training. You see two uh, AT-6 Texans in formation here. And this is an interesting shot. These are the next generation trainers after World War II. Uh, a Temco Plebe in the foreground, Beechcraft Mentor in the middle, North American Navion in the, uh, in the rear. And these were uh, competing for the military contract for, as I said, next generation uh, prototype. This uh, competition was won by the Beechcraft T-34. Let's climb aboard a Northrop T-38. We're going to go flying with the Air Force Test Pilot School at Edwards Air Force Base. And I'm going to show you some interesting formation work. T-38 first flown in April of 1969, still in service today. Uh, when they were painted white, they were nicknamed the White Rocket. They're now Air Force Gray. 
or black, and uh, they're used for pilot currency uh, training. And of course, this was the world's first supersonic trainer. Here we have close formation doing an aileron roll and uh, open formation uh, coming down the backside of a loop. A two ship tower flyby. This is a maneuver, low altitude, high speed. It's a uh, airspeed calibration course at Edwards and uh, radar altitude is uh, 50 feet. Uh, airspeed is 500 knots. And in this case, we have our uh, two T-38s uh, coming down the course. If you wanna see what it looks like from the cockpit, it looks like that. And at the end of the run, at the uh, west end of the flight line, it's a 6G pull into the vertical, and uh, the two airplanes uh, exit the course in that fashion. Now we're going to look at the F-16 in formation. And uh, this is an interesting airplane because this particular aircraft is used for photo chase uh, for a number of Edwards missions. And the reason, the way you can tell is the front cockpit glass is the standard tint for high, high altitude glare, the rear cockpit is clear glass for the photographer. And that's my friend, uh, and then Captain Chris Ledette. Looks like he's changing film. But just before I took this picture of their airplane, he took this picture of our airplane as I'm looking over my shoulder to see him. And what we're doing here, I've used these photos before, but I'm going to share the story of what was, what was happening on this mission. This was for the uh, 50th anniversary of the test pilot school at that time. And uh, we're setting up for a maneuver where we're going to uh, uh, accelerate uh, to about uh, 600 knots, uh, pull into the vertical and climb above the base to get this photo. He wanted a perfect plan view of the F-16. This is going to be used for all sorts of promotional uh, shots for the school. And uh, this is the, I call it the perfect mission. We got everything we set out to do. 1.6 hours in an F-16 in June 16th, 1994. This is the photo as it appeared. It looks like Photoshop, but this is the actual uh, image that was taken. Perfect plan view of the airplane. And after this, the photo ship circled around us, and uh, Chris got this photo. Pretty dynamic. And then a wing over at the top and into uh, a recovery. And I've used this photo many times before, but it's one of my all-time favorites. It's why the F-16 is nicknamed the Lawn Dart. Wrapping up the mission, we uh, pulled into formation with Eddie Van Fossen's T-6, uh, symbolizing the first airplane used by the test pilot school, T-6 Texan, and the current airplane at that time, the F-16B. Uh, now we're going to fly with the 5th Fighter Interceptor Squadron at Minot, North Dakota. This is an F-15B. And I want to show you the uh, impact of lighting, the effect of lighting on aerial photography in formation. Uh, this is called the BDA, Battle Damage Assessment. After a uh, air combat maneuvering sortie, uh, the uh, airplane at the top there is circling around to uh, look at his structure, make sure everything's okay. And then he's going to pull over on the other side of uh, our ship. And I took this photo and look at the difference in the lighting and the color. One is into the sun. This is down sun. Flying with the Navy and the F-14B. This is Oceana, Virginia, VF-11, the Red Rippers. And we take off in formation, uh, climb in formation through a cloud deck. This is kind of interesting. And then break out on top. Purpose of this mission was for me to study the different lines of the airplane, uh, preparing for a painting. And uh, there's the F-14. What a fantastic machine. Just uh, with the variable geometry wing automatically functioning throughout the flight. Uh, never broke a sweat. Just a beautiful, beautiful jet. Some bombers in formation, the tall tail B-52D, turbojet powered, and the turbofan powered B-52H shown uh, during aerial refueling. We're going to look at some more aerial refueling a little later, but uh, this is indeed formation flying. You're just connected to the other airplane. And here we have an interesting six o'clock view of the B-2 Spirit, North America, Northrop's stealth bomber. Well, we go from photo chase to safety chase. These are the chase planes used uh, during the 50s for uh, ch chasing the X planes, in this case, the Douglas Skyrocket returning from a high altitude, high speed mission. And the uh, chase would accompany it through the landing. In the 1960s, we had the X-15 
and the chase served a number of functions, but here we see it uh, calling out the final altitudes for landing because the pilot really had a tough time seeing over the nose and judging his height above the lake bed. Well, now we're going to get into the 90s, late 1990s, with uh, the JSF Joint Strike Fighter Competition. This is a head-on view of the Boeing X-32. And we chase this. That's uh, our plane in the background, the NASA F-18. And we had formations like this. This is called a right echelon. And here we are coming into the break for landing. And I believe the phrase is, wait for it. There you go. Interesting shot of the airplane. With the Lockheed X-35, we uh, took off in formation. We're preparing here, runway 04 at Edwards. And then this is a ground shot by my friend Tony Landis of the two chase planes uh, following the X-35. I'm in the red and white airplane. A Lockheed photographer is in the all white airplane. But this is the kind of photography that we took uh, up at altitude, different configurations. And then the purpose of this flight was the first aerial, aerial refueling uh, of an X-plane per se. And uh, the uh, this was a four hour, 20 minute mission total. Uh, the X-35 spent about three and a half hours of that uh, in different positions on the boom of this uh, uh, KC-135. Here you see the Lockheed photographer. Uh, in this case, he was shooting video at that point. And then uh, a little later on, he took a still photo and that's our airplane up at the top with the uh, X-35 on the boom. I took this shot of the tanker and we were about to uh, pull into position and take on some fuel as well. But uh, close formation flying between a fighter and a transport. That's really what this is. Speaking of tankers, uh, let's look at a few through history. The uh, Boeing KC-97 uh, served as a tanker in the late 40s, early 50s, refueling jets like this uh, B-47. And um, it was an interesting uh, mix of uh, air speeds and performance. And the solution for some of the problems encountered here was uh, a jet, which we'll see in a moment. But this is the F-4 Phantom uh, with a KC-97L with the auxiliary jets uh, attempting to uh, improve the performance. And I, I use this photo because it's really uh, emphatic over how the service life of some of these airplanes go. The KC-97 served until the uh, mid to late 1970s. Beautiful sideline shot. Let's look at a few others. The KC-135 Stratotanker uh, solved the airspeed problems and uh, was uh, brought into being for refueling SAC's Strategic Air Command's jet bombers. But in this case, we have an F-105F on the boom out of Hill Air Force Base in Utah. So this is called a boomer shot and a sideline shot. Here we have the KC-10 from McDonnell Douglas, went into service in 1982, uh, cargo tanker aircraft. And let's look at a boomer shot from the KC-10. This is uh, the Lockheed F-117 stealth fighter and a sideline shot from the KC-10. And then after that, our KC-10 took on fuel from a KC-135 so now you've got two airliners basically flying in formation, a 707 and a DC-10 in essence. But let's look at a few more. Boeing used uh, formation flying for promotion. These are the first two Boeing 707 airliners in 1958 over Mount Rainier, or as, as it was nicknamed, Mount Boeing for uh, all the photos that were taken over it. This beautiful shot of the uh, British Airways Concords in formation. And the Airbus fleet, an Airbus released photo. So yes, airliners fly in formation as well. Sometimes when an airliner isn't built yet, they use artwork. This is a painting I did for Delta uh, showing the new MD-11 at top and the airplane wasn't in service yet. So they used the painting to show the combination of the 767 and MD-11. In this case, I was uh, commissioned to paint the entire fleet of Continental aircraft uh, flying over the Grand Canyon. And what's really cool is the use of artwork to create a formation like this that could never happen. You'd never have a Lockheed Vega flying at 600 miles an hour with a DC-10 at the top. Uh, and finally, uh, the use of uh, formations in artwork showing the X-planes at Edwards, the X-1, the Skyrocket, the motherships, the chase planes, the X-2 and the X-15, the shuttle, 
uh, on the approach and landing test launching from the 747 and the other aircraft as well in a mural that showed the base. And this is in the museum at uh, Edwards Air Force Base. So we've seen formations from World War II and into the jet age. I had a naval aviator friend that uh, looked at this photo. He says, you know why we do this? I said, no, why? He said, because we can. So there you have it. A look at formations uh, throughout uh, the latter part of the 20th century. Special thanks to the great people who allow uh, the images and uh, support our channel and make these uh, presentations possible. And thank you so much for celebrating aviation with Mike Machat. Always great to have you on board. If you haven't subscribed, we'd love to have you uh, with us. Uh, please do hit the like button on the way out. That helps us with YouTube. And until next time, take care.